Well, as you heard, the instrument we just played is called Mbira. Mbira is the traditional instrument of Zimbabwe dating back over a thousand years and is important in their culture for ceremonies and celebrations. For the past 18 years, I've been studying Mbira and Marimba, which led me to teaching both instruments, traveling to Africa several times, and bringing Zimbabwe musicians here to share their musical heritage. I'm thinking back on one of those tours. It was 2008. I took a whole van load of musicians to Shai Shai Beach on the Olympic Peninsula before they were to head back to Africa. You see, Zimbabwe is a landlocked country. These masters of Mbira, called Gwenya Mbiras, had never seen an ocean before. They ran into the waves, but quickly retreated. <laughs> They had not considered the temperature of the water. <laughs> they play their mbiras at the shore for hours, determined to call up a whale. Honoring the water spirits is very important in their culture. To their disappointment, they did not call up a whale. When we were leaving the ocean, I asked a fisherman if he might take these men out on his boat for a ride. They'd only been on a ferry. So out in the middle of Nia Bay, with high winds and big waves, these men were so terrified, pleading to be taken back to shore, when the fisherman cut the engine, put on the Mbira CD that they had gifted to him, and let the boat just rock in the waves. A few minutes later, a whale surfaced by the boat several times. They had called a whale. I stood on the beach watching them that day and thought, how did I become so engaged with these people? At what point did I become so immersed in Africa? What was the thread that led me from a farm in Missouri to this place? Music was that thread, my transformation to bridging cultures. The style of music is interlocking rhythms, woven together in everyday life with everyone of all ages. The traditional music is described as leading and following, like a seed follows the plow. One embieta starts, the other follows, and together you're leaning, feeling drawn into the music. The style of music, I mean the traditional, sorry, it's participation. And everyone participates through singing, clapping, and dancing. But traditionally, Mbira was only for men. They have a saying that is, if you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. I was quickly drawn in, heart and soul, with these people from another culture. I realized it was the music that took me there, but it was the people that kept bringing me back. They have deep pride in their roots. There's a timeless quality to everyday life. I was experiencing deep connections with their families, their, their, their communities, and their ancestors through the music. As a guest, when you enter a village, you're welcomed in a manner from ancient times. You clap your hands respectfully, you enter the hut, you move clockwise to a sitting position, women on the right, men on the left. The elder welcomes you and starts playing in Bira. Soon everyone is singing, clapping, and dancing. The young pay close attention, waiting for their turn. Late at night, they get their chance, and if it's a ceremony, it will get wild and go on all night long. But early the next morning, with little sleep, it's back to tending the fields and the children. <laughs> Each time I came back home, I experienced more culture shock than when I had arrived in Africa. It took several trips there and back for me to realize the nature of feeling connected when half a world apart. I would grieve at the loss of not being with my friends, when I talked to them about this, they would say, you are always with us. We meet to part, we part to meet. The interlocking of music, life, and, and community that I learned there now plays a part of my daily life here. Sharing my passion and seeing others caught up in the joy of the music is a rich reward. Bringing Zimbabwe musicians to share their musical heritage with all of us in this community has created a cross-cultural exchange that has grown beyond the music. The interlocking plays out in group experiences of all ages, bridging generation gaps. One of the greatest gifts I have received from this music and love sharing with my students is the return of the natural talent we're all born with, learning through listening, listening keeping the oral tradition alive. In the remote village of Dambatsoko, there is a large stone inscribed with a prophecy dated back in the 1940s when the white government had taken the Mbira away from the people. On the stone it says, white people and black people will come to this place to learn Mbira, and the music will travel to all the countries of the world. Even though it's written in stone, the villagers never expected that a handful of us would be women. <laughs> <laughs> and long ago on my farm in Missouri, I would never have expected that one of them would be me. Thank you.